Welcome, Libra singles, to the Casa. This year, end of November time frame. Meet the singles, singles group. Super singles, completely singles, totally singles, I say, because we're asking the right one to come in, leaving a space for them, looking at this being single, in that sense of being an opportunity for the right one to come in. The soulmate using the ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck today. And um, I've already pre shuffled, so I'm ready to go. Don't really read the bottom of the deck on this reading, guys. Um, if uh, you haven't, would you check out the Soul Family uh, Daily Collective Read? I'll put a link under here in the description to it uh, to make it easy. Um, but this one, and always on Thursdays, is Labor Scorpio Day, so we also have the heart spread up, I do, for you if you have someone in your mind. But it's kind of specifically really be wide open, and you kind of don't have anyone on your mind. Um, and I, I see that as, uh, and if you desire to have someone in your life, it, you know, it doesn't have to be burning, even just you're just open to it, I think, is that the key, emotionally open to it. Uh, and that's a time when, you, you know, with good intentions, I don't know, if you believe in intentions and manifestation, um, then we can see the right one come in, not the next ex-problem, the next uh, ex-wife, ex-husband. And so I look at this with eight cards, two cards, uh, in emotional energy, uh, look at intellectual energy, sexual and love nature, and core values and lifestyle, the four pillars of a relationship. So let's start, guys. Wow. Ten of Cups. This is in their emotional nature. Um, here I see the moon, the childhood, um, and the Five of Wands, the Ten of Cups over the Five of Wands. Quite a contrast. Come down here where you can see them. Here, let me look at the intellectual. Wow, the tower. I was about to say basically that. Uh huh. And the Two of Swords. So, I tell you specifically, the, and we're going to have an interesting, I'm going to have to approach the tower here in terms of the sun. But let me get to that, uh, you know. Um, but you have someone here telling you their story. You're telling each other your stories. And their parents would have been uh, madly in love at the beginning. <laughs> and with this Ten of Cups, you know. Just, just look at how amazing that is, a happy family. But there's some kind of disruption um, you know, I, and I'm not I'm just saying this story they might sell. They may not even kind of realize this. They just may know there was a rough spot, a divorce separation, a bump, a, something that was probably followed by, there was probably a lot of tranquility. And then kind of from a child's point of view, suddenly kind of out of nowhere, there's all this, you know, fighting really is what that is, bickering, arguing, you know, um, so this is what your person's childhood was uh, like. Um, and you know, I, I just think it's, it is something that affected them and say they're perfect, so they're your person, the one that's right for you. You know, all of us have, most, very few of us have an idyllic, you know, childhood, unfortunately. Um, and we make of them what we will. But I have to see a Cancer moon here, and I think it's well placed. Like maybe in the fourth house here, uh, they make them an Aries rising. I don't know why I'm getting that. It's like uh, uh, maybe though it could be uh, getting the Aries Cancer. It it could be they have a, they definitely have a Cancer moon, but maybe the moon's on the ascendant or or in the first house on the ascendant. That could be. So that's getting kind of specific. And um, it would give them a lot of strength emotionally and make them, you know, very emotional no matter how they were. And I'm actually reading the Tower with the Two of Swords here as Aquarius. And I often read the Tower as Uranus energy. So, um, an Aquarius uh, 
sun with a cancer moon. You know, thick stare, cardinal or uh, water. Um, that's an interesting mix right there. So in terms of this person, I think this Two of Swords is just an Aquarius Mercury to me. And in terms of this reading, you know, don't don't let the Three of Swords uh, scare you. Nobody breaking up. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is all just aspects of their personality, right? I might try to get stories. Um, I, my guess is, you know, it could be almost literal. Like your person has five brothers or four brothers or three brothers. I don't know they have a lot of siblings, and there might have been just a jockeying for position. I don't know about. Usually this isn't real vicious, you know, in relationships it's kind of vicious because nothing will ruin love like bickering and arguing all the time, I think. As a Sagittarius and a Scorpio, uh, Venus, it's like, that, that just beats the hell out of it. Um, so with a Mercury and Aquarius, um, your person would be, like, really sharp, um, and probably something like New Age, uh, out of the box, um, I'm thinking. I'm not sure on the age here. This could kind of be any age from early adulthood. I don't really see old age particularly, but early adulthood to, you know, early o old age till my age. I'm like 62, you know. Um, but this is someone with a very uh, unusual mind and a very sharp mind. And I think like uh, the Ten of Cups over the Five of Wands, we'll, I bet we'll see it. Next I'll go here to their sexual love nature, see Venus and I'll see Mars energy. And here the, um, you look at the core values and lifestyle energy. Um, but there's someone that doesn't like being agitated emotionally. And so with this Ten of Cups, uh, it really focuses the uh, Cancer Moon. It somehow plays so that it really functions at the, at the highest level of the moon. And, you know, being at home in Cancer, um, you know, Lord of Cancer, um, it's helping them keep their equilibrium, you know. Um, and there's a real balance here, you know, Uranus energy and Aquarius energy with the Mercury here, and both in the Sun energy. Um, they're also emotional, but they're not that kind of emotional, like, I gotta be honest, like I'm a Cancer Moon, like kinda I am, and we're easily swamped and overwhelmed by our own emotion. You know? um, they, they just have all the positive traits of a Cancer Moon of being emotionally aware, emotionally intelligent, emotionally uh, vulnerable and uh, available. Five of Pentacles, this is in the love and sexual position here when Aquarius, Capricorn, Venus is what that is. The Hanged Man, Pisces, Mars. Look at that guys, the Hanged Man. So in the sexual love nature, the Five of Pentacles and the Hanged Man now, a little bit they carry uh, with this Capricorn Venus into their love nature. And by the way, it's a great Venus. I'm a, a Venus in Scorpio. Um, it will, uh, if you're, it's not going to do the short term. It, Venus love energy wants to go into something that it's going to believe can be productive and grow. Um, very Capricorn -y, you know, Venus. Um, and they'll look for a partner who fits that bill. They don't want somebody that uh, bum they have to drag along, you know. They're, they're willing to work, but they want someone to work with them. Uh, but there's this black mentality that they would have to deal with here. Um, you know, whatever went on in their childhood. My guess is after the things went bad with the relationship, um, the siblings, uh, he and the siblings, or she, he or she and the siblings, it could be either way, you know, um, you know, had to kind of fend for themselves, I mean, um, you know, um, 
a little bit Lord of the Flies made me think, you know, emotionally, emotionally. Cancer mill, cancer mill, ridiculously sensitive, you know. So, you know, what, you know, things that may not affect other people so badly, cancer moon were exactly the ones that might make too big a deal out of it, you know. Not maybe too big a deal, it just would mean a lot more to us emotionally. So Nine of Pentacles, kind of a great card to get in the core values and lifestyle. Um, and the Three of Cups. So, let me say before I move into that, um, with the Pisces, Mars, male or female, um, they're going to be very loving and uh, sexual and very sensual, but probably not aggressive. They're probably not going to initiate, so even if a man, so whether a man or woman, if you just don't uh, take, uh, and with the Capricorn Venus, you know, and they may be slow, Capricorn Venus is a lot of times slow to rev up, so you'd think with a soul man, a soul mate, there's instant uh, recognition, and boom, and you're there. And to me, this Nine Pinnacles is very Capricorn-y too, here. Um, so your person seems like the kind of person, again, of any age, that would be working hard, obtaining the training they may need, advanced degrees they may need. I believe they have the mind for it, you know. Uh, as an astrologer, like I say, one of the first things I've noticed is Aquarius, uh, Mercury people, uh, they usually are very good, capable, very capable ones. Do whatever they need to do, accomplish in terms of that. Um, so they would be very sensual and kind of passive. And um, I think they'll be kind of a behind closed doors type of person. So, you know, you'll see a definite difference in them in terms of just how they deal to you personally as a lover even when not in the bedroom and like with the rest of the world and they will deal more with you with their moon energy cancer energy and your family if you have children together you know your children if you know they whoever's in the home and they love cancer family home right mother um they will be like a mother to you and to your children if necessary to y'all's children as it may be you know in the future here um and it'll it'll be it would be as if someone that only knew them say professionally came home and spent time with them around you guys they would notice it like it wouldn't have to be that smart or subtle uh or, or paying attention to kind of go huh wow so and so is really different um when they get home here um, to their uh, Libra. Um, so in terms of what they do, I say it's somebody's going to be a solid, uh, working, putting in the time. I mean, this is exactly the kind of person that could start in the in the mail room, work their way up to uh, whatever, you know, um, and by putting in the hours, doing things right, being Capricorn here climbing, whatever is necessary, say they would get the extra degree, get the certificates needed, training, and I think this is the kind of person with this uh, Three of Cups energy, I don't think this speaks about like uh, fooling around or anything, but this person knows how to let their hair down, I think, that's an element of that, and there are cups here, so their emotions, it's a little bit linked to this hangman, which is Pisces, Mars. Um, now, you know, you're thinking of Mar Pisces and addictions, everything. It's, it's not like that, but it's unreality. Pisces, Neptune, un it's everything that's not real. So, like, when they're making love, it's a little passive because maybe they're in their minds experiencing something at some level sexually that's not really, a, a, you can even articulate. You know, this is the depths of, like, a, a Pisces, Mars. And this may be in them, you know, and uh, I'm just saying when they relax, they might really relax. Uh, be able to really stretch out to it and enjoy. It's kind of a balance, you know, and the Nine of Pentacles here just shows someone that's got a grip on whatever they do. They do it well, they make money at it, they're content, they're fine, they're taken care of, the Nine of Pentacles. 
I mean, next move is like King of Pentacles from there. It's like you're there. So, um, I think this gives us some idea what your person might be like, guys. Um, and maybe you can imagine how that might fit into your life. And I see this as a predictive read. So this is likely someone you don't know or you haven't met yet. But you will be reading, meeting anytime soon here in this end of November time frame, guys. So do let me know if uh, that uh, if you run into this person, get back to me even if it's a week or two from now. And let me know, guys. Give me a like, thumbs up, tell a friend, tell a friend. Hope you enjoy the rain. I kind of do. As long as I'm inside. We put things off because we don't need to go out. And we'll deal with it tomorrow. And that's really beautiful. You know, and do subscribe. Thank you, guys.